channel. Today's topic is on vaccines. So before we dive into talking about vaccines, I thought we'd just touch base and kind of give a quick review of antibodies and what they are. So they're little Y-shaped proteins, kind of look like this uh, in the body. M majority of them um, are Y-shaped and they serve two functions. One, the one function, they bind the toxins and they inactivate them. Um, this can be any toxin in the body. The other function, a little bit more important, they're markers uh, in the body for, uh, similar to how the trees get marked with an X before they're torn, you know, um, cut down in the forest. Uh, this kind of works in the same fashion. When this antibody binds to a virus or bacteria or, or even your own cells, for example, um, it's a marker for the body to destroy it. Who destroys it? The white blood cells, the spleen, um, <clears throat> sometimes other proteins. Depending on the type of antibody, other proteins can destroy it. They can poke holes into it. So, antibodies important for you know your immune system for your general health. Um, how do you get antibodies? Uh, majority of antibodies people get by creating them, creating the antibodies themselves by white blood cells. So, if you saw my last video on the white blood cells and how they work, um, you, there's plenty of pictures in there on, on uh, which specific white blood cells produce antibodies. Uh, white blood cells make antibodies. Another way that you can get antibodies from uh, outside sources. Greatest example of this is babies. Babies are born, their white cells aren't fully mature yet to function for about the first two months of life. Um, they get their antibodies uh, for the first two months through the mom from her placenta. So, mom's antibodies protect baby for the first two months of life. Um, after that, they can produce their own antibodies. Okay? Antibodies. So now going back to vaccines. Now, kind of, uh, we'll see how they're kind of interrelated and very important interactions. Um, so, what are virus? What are vaccines? They're actually pieces of viruses or bacteria. Um, a demonstrative example of a virus here and a bacteria here. Uh, outside of each of them, there's uh, several different shaped proteins. Um, again, cartoon triangle circle shapes for a demonstration. They're actually much more complex if you saw them under an electron microscope. But for simplicity's sake, we we'll just say they're different shapes of proteins on each virus or bacteria. Um, really, what your body needs is that outside protein or one of the inside proteins to make antibodies. So, what is a vaccine? It's it's a piece of that virus or that bacteria. What happens? Um, so we'll talk a little bit in the, in the next few slides about how it works. So either it'll be a piece of the virus or bacteria, or sometimes that we've found that uh, for certain vaccines, um, just weakening the organism, uh, either by destroying uh, some of the virus or bacteria's own proteins, or by removing pieces of their own proteins, you, so you, might, you might get like a weakened version of it, and that might work much better than a piece of it. So what you're getting when you get a vaccination, when you go to the doctor, typically you're getting either a piece of the virus or bacteria or a dead or weakened version of the virus or bacteria. When I say weakened, we mean weakened to the point where you will not get an infection from it. Uh, weakened to the point where it can't make more of itself. But it is, uh, it is uh, the, like the pieces required uh, to make um, to the vaccine work at all there. Um, sometimes vaccines need boosters. What do I mean by boosters? You're getting the same protein over again several times uh, by doing so. So you get, say you get a vaccine. Certain vaccines you get one and you're set for life. Your body uh, sees them and uh, you only need the ones. Other other vaccines you kind of need like periodic reminders. The common one for this is the the Tdap, the tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccine. Uh, need, typically we get uh, boosters of that. So here's how we're talking about the slide where I'm talking about how it works. So you get the vaccine typically injected in, in your muscle, in your body, in your arm, somewhere like that. Um, you're getting this piece of the protein. The body sees that you've got something foreign put into it, okay? Now the body sends white cells over to examine this. White blood cells do not know it's a vaccine. They, they see it and they think, oh man, we're getting attacked by a chicken pox. We're getting attacked by measles. We're getting attacked by rubella whatever the vaccine may be, it might be influenza. Um, now, what it does is it, it, it does the exact same thing as if you were being attacked by that, that, that disease, okay? It makes antibodies, little Y-shaped uh, antibodies. Now, 
these antibodies are identical to the antibodies you would make if you actually got the disease. So because the proteins we give you in the vaccine are identical to the proteins that you're gonna get from the, uh, from the disease itself, uh, your antibodies will be identical. So antibodies are, like I said, very specific, the third, fourth bullet point down, very specific, one antibody, one disease. You, you don't have uh, very many antibodies that cross-react, so you need a separate antibody for rubella, you need a separate antibody for measles, you need a separate antibody um, for the chicken box. Um, so what, what does this mean? So you have this antibodies, right? So say I got a chicken pox vaccine, I built all these antibodies against it because the vaccine worked, your white blood cells came, they saw it, they treated it like four and they made antibodies. Now I'm walking down the street, I bump into a guy who has chicken pox, he sneezes on me, he rubs his arm or something. I'm exposed to the chicken pox virus, right? Since you already have the antibodies against it, these antibodies will work to make sure you do not get an infection from it. They neutralize the virus, they, um, they actually increase, the, once your body uh, sees the interaction between your own antibodies and the chicken box, it pumps up the machinery, makes more antibodies, um, and as a result, you're not gonna get sick from it. You're not gonna get the itchy, scratchy bumps, you won't get sick. That's what we want. Nobody wants to get sick. So why do we give vaccines? Now, um, in a nutshell, for your health, okay? What is the difference between um, somebody who get the, got the chicken box and somebody who got the vaccine for the chicken box. Uh, 10 years on the line, they both have the exact same antibodies. There's uh, no difference in antibodies. The only difference is the one who got the vaccine, he didn't get sick or she didn't get sick. Uh, in a way, it's like an insurance policy. Uh, you get insurance policy for your car is just in case something happens, the insurance will pay you back. So you don't have to dish out the $50,000, for example, for your body. It's an insurance policy. You have the antibodies just in case you get exposed to the, the virus, you won't get sick. Simple as that. Um, when everybody gets vaccinated against a specific virus or bacteria, it does create what's called community immunity. Um, there are children that you know, we'll talk about a little bit later, certain diseases that can't get vaccines. Uh, people who can't get vaccines are typically those who don't have the white blood cells. Will they get sick from the vaccine if they don't have the white blood cells? They won't, the vaccine just won't work. You need the white blood cells and you need uh, the, the vaccine to create antibodies. Or you need the white blood cells and the disease. So two ways you can get the antibodies. Um, long term though, the nice thing about this community uh, immunity is if enough people get vaccinated and the incidence of the virus goes down, um, some vaccines we can stop using because we can eliminate certain diseases from our population as a whole. Everybody got vaccinated several generations in a row, virus gets eliminated, we can stop vaccinations for particular viruses because they're eliminated from the population. So certain vaccines we don't give anymore from you know the early 1900s because those diseases have been eradicated from our population. So uh, something we can keep continuing going forward on a, on a disease by disease basis. So, kind of talked about how they work. Some common questions. Are they safe for new, newborns? Yes. So, vaccines, like I said, you, newborns typically get vaccines right around the two month uh, window and they start to six, uh, four, <clears throat> two, four, six months forward. White blood cells become mature at that point uh, and can produce antibodies. You give a vaccine to a newborn that's like a month old. One, they already have antibodies from their parents, assuming the parents are properly vaccinated. They have protection from those, those antibodies are already in their system. Two, the proteins are gonna float in their body, not, not interact. You won't get a strong antibody response. Um, if you give a vaccine at age of one, it's questionable whether it'll, it'll have any effect. It won't have any negative effect because uh, these vaccines can't make you sick, but it may not have the positive effect. Hence why we wait for two months. Um, what are the adverse effects? So. Um, a lot of times we'll say the same adverse effects for every set of uh, vaccines. Why is this? Because symptoms people feel after they get a vaccine are the symptoms of your white blood cells responding. So like I said, white blood cells do not know if the vaccine you're getting is a real virus or if it's just a 
vaccine. They treat them the same way. So the uh, result is you're going to get the fever, you're going to get the swelling, all these, and, and maybe sometimes a little bit of pain. Now, it varies person to person, um, but having the fever, having the swelling, having the pain, it's kind of an indication that it's working, that the, virus, that the white blood cells have got to the vaccine and they're pumping out these antibodies. Um, usually lasts a day or two at the most. As I said, do vaccines cause the disease? You're getting a piece of the virus or a dead virus. So typically, no. Even the weakened viruses typically cannot cause disease. Um, now, if you get the vaccine and you get exposed to the virus too soon before you have produced antibodies, it may seem like you know you, you will get the disease. So say you have the chickenpox vaccine, and the next morning you were exposed to somebody with chickenpox, your body hasn't made enough antibodies against it, you may still get a disease. But it's not from the vaccine. The vaccine takes sometimes takes a little time to work. Uh, do they weaken the immune system? This is a common misconception that if a kid gets a bunch of vaccines and their body is not able to fend for themselves, um, the only difference in the immune system uh, of somebody who's been vaccinated and uh, well, there is no difference in the immune system in someone who's been vaccinated and unvaccinated. The only difference in the two people they produce the exact same antibodies. One got sick, one did it. That's the only difference. Again, is it better to be naturally immunized or vaccinated? Big difference is one got sick, one didn't. Some of, some of these diseases, rubella, mumps, measles, they can kill you. So it's kind of a, it's up to you whether you know you take that risk. Most schools now are not willing to let students, the parents let their children take the risk because people do die from rubella every year. And people die from measles, mumps. These, some of these other diseases, you know, we vaccinated against them for the safety of the children and for the safety of our population. You have a kid who's unvaccinated going into a school um, because he's, you know, parents don't want to get vaccinated or something like that. Um, there may be another kid at that school who can't get vaccinated because he doesn't have the white blood cells. Now, between those two, they start harboring a virus and it spreads around. Other kids who can't get vaccinated because they don't have white blood cells, you end up producing a uh, you know, re-emergence of the virus. And, and this actually does happen. Um, there was, it was in Oklahoma, uh, out, out Western United States, uh, there was an outbreak of uh, measles not too long ago due to a community of people who decided not to vaccinate. And, and several children died from that. And, 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 that, and that's uh, really unfortunate, but um, you know, moving forward, I just encourage people to get vaccines. There's no harm, they're 100% safe. Um, leads us to our next our next point. Um, vaccines do they cause autism? So this is uh, <clears throat> no. In short, no, they do not cause autism. There's no link between vaccines and autism. Uh, this is a common misconception. Um, there's been rumors about this for for years now. Now, autism is a, a, a so it's like a social dis disorder. It's genetically defined. It's something that if you you have autism, you're born with autism. Can't change that uh, after you've been born. Um, it's typically diagnosed around one to one to four years of age, which is also the time when you get the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. So some some people have you know speculated. These are rumors, but it has been proven to be false time and time again in many many studies. Um, that there's no link between any vaccines, not just measles, mumps, rubella, and there's no link between any vaccines and autism. There's no link. Are they 100% effective? So most of the common uh, vaccines like measles, mumps, rubella, those they hover in the near 100%, 97%, 98% range. The big one that um, doesn't is the flu, flu virus, can be around 60%. Um, so we get vaccinated every year for the flu virus because the outside proteins change every year. So um, the people at the uh, CDC, Center of, Disease, uh, Center of Disease Control, they determine which proteins are most likely to be on the flu virus for each given year, and they make a vaccine based on that. They give you the vaccine, um, but in most cases, it's about 65% accurate. So, and it varies year to year. So some years they're more accurate. Some years they can be up to 90%. So it's, it's kind of a, for the flu virus specifically, it's kind of a guessing game. Other viruses don't change their outside proteins to stay the same year after year, hence not a guessing game, they're more accurate. 
So what, are we, what can we vaccinate for currently? The Tdap, the diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, hemophilus vaccine, uh, measles, mumps, rubella, we talked about that, hepatitis B, uh, the chicken pox, which is a varicella virus, uh, streptococcus pneumonia is the most, one of the most common causes of community pneumonia. Um, hepatitis A, it's, it's a really bad uh, diarrhea-like syndrome. Um, rotavirus, it's another diarrhea-like syndrome. Polio is a terrible virus that actually causes paralysis in your feet. Um, meningitis is an infection uh, of um, the fluid around your brain, which is very, very lethal. Um, HPV is actually a, a virus that we can vaccinate against, which is really cool because uh, when you get the, vi the vaccine for that virus, that virus, when people get infected with it, can cause cervical cancer. So we have a vaccine that can prevent cervical cancer. I mean, it sounds like a no-brainer, and then there's influenza, uh, again, every year because the proteins change. So, long list of diseases that people can get vaccines. In short, a lot of them don't produce white cells or they don't produce white cells that work. Um, these specific children, they typically get identified really early on. They get lots of infections and they actually end up, a good number of them end up getting uh, antibodies injected into them just, just, just to prevent them from getting sick. But like I said, if you can't make them, we can give them to you. But Let's go on for injections every two months, right? So, bottom line, vaccines cause no harm. Uh, they've been extensively tested, um, and they prevent serious illness. A lot of these illnesses can kill you. Meningitis, for example, many people die from that every year, um, and they promote public health. Like I said, information gathered from up-to-date clinical fee, personal experience in the lab. And that's, uh, that concludes our session today. Uh, feel free to leave any questions in the comments, uh, give any suggestions to future talks. Thanks for watching.